Bram Stoker published Dracula in 1897, and you probably know that he was Irish, but did you know that Irish folklore and mythology has a few creatures, two specifically I'll be talking about today, that may have actually influenced his iconic creature, Dracula. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the Avartuk and the Darug Du. Eve Green the Usha August Falja, hello and welcome. It's Risha Amy the Crafty Kylock, and I make content about Irish history, folklore, food, and magic. Seeing as we're coming closer to Samhain, we're finally in October, and there's a little bit of a chill in the air. I wanted to do a few videos that are a little bit spookier than my normal content, and I have been dying to get back to talking about different otherworldly creatures from Irish mythology and folklore. So first I'm going to talk about the Avertok. Now the Avertok, A-B-H-A-R-T-A-C-H, is a figure or creature in Irish folklore, not to be confused with Avertok, which is spelled very similarly just without the H. The Abertok is a character that's found in lots of tales with Fionn McCool. It's an otherworldly kind of mischief maker character. The Avertok, however, is a specific magical creature from Irish folk tales. So it was originally recorded in a story by Patrick Weston Joyce, who was a kind of antiquarian folk lorist folk tale collector, which was published in the late 1800s, was the origin and history of Irish names. So the Avertok is described as and given in Irish etymological dictionaries as a quote-unquote dwarf. Now this is absolutely not the term for little person which is Dina Bjog and thanks to Sinead Burke who was campaigning in 2016 the correct terminology was finally added to the Irish dictionary. If you want to find out more about that I'll leave a link in the description below. But the Avertok is a creature that is described um, as being short in stature in Irish folklore. And like in many other tales, like I'm always saying, there's always various different versions of these folk tales, depending on the region, depending on the storyteller, depending on a lot of other things. But the legend, as it was recorded by Joyce, said that he was a chieftain, but he was also known as a bit of a tyrant, not a very nice person and a magician. And he basically was just wreaking havoc, annoying people, being really cruel and mean. Eventually he was killed by a chieftain from a neighboring tribe. Again, there's lots and lots of different accounts about this. Some people, again, maybe confusing Avertok and Avertok attribute the chieftain who killed the Avertok to being Fionn McCool, but there's no consensus on it. So the Avertok, after being killed by this chieftain, is said to have been buried standing up. And we know from accounts of St. Patrick in the 5th century, who also was allegedly buried standing up that this may have been a custom of the time but after he was buried he rose up again the next day went around to all the places he used to go annoying the people that he used to annoy and was even worse than ever I guess being killed will do that to you so the chieftain who had originally killed him returned and killed him again and again the body was buried again in a standing position and the next day the Avertok came back again. After this, the chieftain, who had now killed the Avertok twice, went to a local druid for some advice. In different later versions of the story, the druid is a priest or a Christian saint. So the druid advised the chieftain to bury him upside down in the grave to try and stop him coming back and then just for good measure a huge stone was placed on top of the grave to make sure that he couldn't come back. That seemed to work in one version of the story but again there's multiple versions of these stories and the second version of the story is a lot more gory. So according to the other legend there wasn't a trap placed or there was no way that they could basically prevent the Avertok from returning from the grave and instead the Avertok would go around drinking people's blood. In those versions, the Druid tends to be a Christian saint who describes the Avertok as Nyavmar or undead. And then to kind of add to this version of the story, 
the only way that the Avatar can actually stay dead is if the chieftain kills him with a wooden sword. Buries him upside down, places a large stone on the grave and also like plants briars over the grave as well so it can't be um, accessed. So the specification of having to kill the Avatar with a wooden sword would really kind of echo the wooden stake through the heart that you typically hear in vampire lore. So that's the Avertok. The second story is actually a story from my hometown in Waterford, and that is a story of the Darg Du. Now, the Darg Du, when you search for it online, is spelled either D-U-B-H, which is dove or black in Irish, and also it's spelled kind of more phonetically in English as D-U-E or D-O-O. So with the story of the Darg Du, it's the story of a young woman who turns into a blood-sucking, vengeful creature after being forced into an arranged marriage. Due to the themes of the story, I am going to give a content warning for domestic violence and suicide. So if you're not in a space to engage with a story that has those themes in it, you can skip this part. I will put a timestamp here and I will also put one in the description if you want to just skip this story altogether and catch me in a couple of minutes. So as the story goes, a beautiful young maiden and chieftain's daughter falls in love with a local farm labourer peasant. Despite the fact that she has fallen in love with this man, her father doesn't care. He's very greedy. He is very focused on money and power and political alliances. So he arranges a marriage, which is beneficial for him and beneficial for her new husband, but not very ben beneficial for this young woman. Her new husband is horrible. He locks her in a tower, continually abuses her, and she ends up dying by suicide. And he doesn't really care. He ends up getting a new woman straight away and in some versions of the story he has multiple women on the go which is totally fine if you're polyamorous but I don't think that's what was going on. Anyway the young woman um, after dying is buried under a tree which I will come back to in a minute and most versions of the story that I've heard say that she was buried under a tree a specific tree called Strongbow's tree and there was a custom of placing stones on graves like lots of stones on graves to prevent people coming back from the dead and for some reason some stories say that people felt so guilty for not having helped her while she was alive and they could see what was going on that they didn't do this on her grave that they felt too guilty and to even go to her grave to do this so again different versions say that it was that night that she rose from the grave others say that it was a year after her death like on the anniversary of her death that she rose from the grave and sought vengeance for what had been done to her so first she went to her father who had effectively sold her off to this very cruel and known to be cruel man and she leant down to his face and sucked the breath of life out of him. Then she went to find her ex-husband and she sucked the life out of him too. Some versions of the story that I heard say that when she arrives into their bed he's in bed with two women and she ends up killing everybody but in other versions she either meets him as he's walking home from a tavern or she meets him at their old house she sucks the life out of him as well like she did with her father but she goes one step further and sucks him dry of blood as well and then she gets a bloodlust and continues to lure men to their death by her beauty and continually reenacting her revenge and vengeance for what had happened to her and rightly fucking so. So it said on the anniversary of her death for many years after that locals would then go to her grave and put stones there to basically make sure that she didn't come back. Now what's very interesting about well there's a, there's a lot of things that are interesting about the Dark Dew story. So first of all the tree that I mentioned Strongbow's tree which she's said to have been buried under. Allegedly there is a local tree that fits the description and has a grave near it that has stones piled high. I have yet to find it but I am committed to finding it. There's no specific location given to where the tree may be. There's tell of 
a graveyard that's located near Reginald's Tower in the city. But the other interesting part about the story is that she's buried under Strongbow's tree specifically. And Strongbow, otherwise known as Richard de Clare, was a figure in Irish history. He was the second Earl of Pembroke and he was a very notable nobleman who was a Norman knight and an Anglo-Norman invader who was instrumental in the invasion of Ireland in the 12th century. So his father-in-law was Dermot McMurray, who was the King of Leinster. And in a dispute over his seat as King of Leinster, he sought help from Henry II, King of England, in regaining his seat and title and basically formed an alliance with Richard de Clare or Strongbow to come over and help him get his seat back as payment for his help in raising an army and helping him get his seat back Dermot McMurray offered his eldest daughter Aoife in marriage to basically secure the alliance and also give Richard de Clare the succession to the Leinster throne and then this was followed by 800 years if you want a video on the Norman invasion of Ireland please let me know because it is something that I previously researched um, when I was first in college studying Irish and it's really interesting but not really directly relevant to this. I just think it's really interesting that we have this local story and the folk tale originates in Waterford in every version of it and that also we have a distinct history in Waterford of Dermot McMurra promising Aoife to Strongbow in marriage and they get married. Some versions say Reginald's Tower, some versions say the Cathedral in Waterford, but they get married in Waterford City. It's just really interesting the parallels between the Starred Do story and the actual historical accounts that we have of their marriage. There's no direct connection that's made between those two things that I've seen. There's no proof that that's where the story originated. But it is just interesting. There's also no direct link between the Avertuck story and the Dark Day story and Dracula. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments if you think that feasibly there could have been influence on Bram Stoker from these two figures in Irish mythology. And there's many more as well. It's really not unheard of for folklore to influence fiction, particularly science fiction and horror. So there very well could be a link there. Speaking about influences of folklore on fiction, I recently did a panel which I made a post about in the community tab on my channel. But I moderated a panel which was hosted by Octacon and in collaboration with Wikimedia Community Ireland, which was really, really fun. It was with Laura O'Brien from the Irish Pagan School and also Morgan Daimler, who is an expert on all things fairy. And it was a really great conversation and panel talking about the different aspects of folklore, particularly focusing on fairies and also talking about how folklore influences fiction and how fiction influences folklore. So if you want to check that out, I will leave a link in the description or you can head to the community tab on my channel. I want to also give a really big thank you to my Ko-fi subscribers and members who have subscribed to the memberships on my Ko-fi channel. If you want to check that out, you can also find a link for that in the description. I don't have any sponsorships or anything for the content that I make. So the money that I get from my Ko-fi memberships goes directly into helping me make content. So a huge thank you to any anyone who has bought me a coffee there or has subscribed to the memberships. If you want to check out any further reading of anything I mentioned in this video, I will leave a whole bunch of links as usual in the description below. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them or point you in the right direction. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up to tell YouTube that you liked it. Hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications if you haven't already and share this with someone if you think they might enjoy it. As always, Gurmila Magathas Fakin, thank you very much for watching. I will see you soon.